we can say that the subclass is a example of the superclass. So, for example, we could say that a specialist is a consultant. A graduate student is a student. A human is a mammal. And so on down the line. So we can say, another way to say that with inheritance is specialization. That it is it's a more specialized form. With inheritance, when you define inheritance, you get really two big benefits. You get reusable code and you get the ability to treat it polymorphically. By reusable code, if there's code that exists on one level, you don't have to define it on the other level unless it's different. So to use our class diagram, if we have uh, the superclass of consultant and the subclass of specialist. There were certain methods that were the same for the consultant and for the specialist, like get name, set name, get uh, rank, set rank, uh, get um, billable hours. I think all of those were defined only on the consultant level because they weren't any different on the specialist level. So you only have to define where they're different. Now I can add behaviors on here or I can override behaviors and I can add attributes on here. But again, only if they're different. So I really code essentially the differences between the special differences, the specialization between the superclass or the subclass and the superclass. Now, when I treat something polymorphically, effectively you could consider it that I'm allowing any subclass to fit in anywhere where the superclass is required. I don't know why I'm redrawing this. But I can, any function that accepts a consultant, I can put in a specialist. If there were more things that were uh, inherited from the consultant, like project leader, let's say. Maybe there's a project leader class. I could put any of these, any of these can play the role of consultant. You know, you can, you know one way to look at polymorphism is saying is it's playing the role. And so, or you can put it in place of. So I can put a project leader or a specialist in place of a consultant, anywhere that that's required. So, for example, I can put it as an argument to a function. Now when things play a role, there's two things we need to be aware of. First of all, they lose their subclass specific methods. In other words, if I define a method on the subclass, if I am treating it like a consultant, if I'm polymorphically passing it to a function as a consultant, it will lose any of those methods that are defined on the specialist. I can only call the methods that are defined on the consultant. However, I do get the subclass version of the methods defined on the superclass. 
And we saw an example of this. Whereas, the specialist had a method for get pay rate, I think. And even if we're treating a specialist like a consultant, if we're passing it as, in as an argument or whatever, or we cast it, um, as a consultant, if we call the get pay rate method, we get the proper one. We get the one that was declared on the subclass. So we can't call any specific methods that only exist on the subclass, like get specialty, for example. But when we do call a method that exists on the consultant, we get the version that exists on the consultant level, on the subclass level. All right. Um, and again, casting in a way is like saying to play a role. Specialist, you know, we're going to treat you like you're a consultant, which means we can only ask you the questions that consultants can be asked. But when we ask you a question that a consultant can answer, we want you to give the answer as a specialist, with the, the method that's defined on the specialist level. So to summarize this again, and to go back, I think, to what I had on the very first slide, that the two benefits of this are shared code, or reusable code, however you want to call it, and polymorphism. Now, as we develop our class diagram and as we develop our classes, the one thing I, that I urge you to keep in mind is to, sometimes it's good not to think as a programmer. Sometimes it's good to take a real world view and think of it in those terms as opposed to thinking it in programming terms. For example, taking a real world view, you know, a specialist is a consultant. A specialist is simply a consultant that has a few additional skills and that gets paid uh, by a, a slightly different basis. Okay? So take a real world view. Now, in the real world though, um, any entity might play a number of different roles. You know, I am, you know, I, I am a husband, I'm a parent, I'm a teacher, I am a owner of a car insurance policy, I'm a driver, you know, I can be said to fit many different roles, all right? Now, with Java, it would just get to be too darn complicated if I was able to inherit from multiple superclasses. Because if I had some function defined on several different places, which one would I get? Which one would I get if I called super? And so on. So, if I was allowed to have multiple inheritance, and I had two super classes, and a subclass inherited from both of them, if I had a method, a function called function A, and it exists on both superclasses, which method would I get if I called that function on the subclass? That'd be confusing, right? Um, and if you weren't careful in your design, you might end up inadvertently calling a method that you really didn't want to call. And if you draw this even more complicated and have more superclasses going up, it, would be, it certainly doesn't get easier. It gets more complicated. So implementing that shared code and, and, and fully implementing multiple inheritance isn't a good idea. So they, the developers, the people that created Java said, nope, no multiple inheritance. That solves this problem, right? Don't you wish all problems were that easy to solve? Huh? You know, how do we do it? Hey, we just won't allow them to do it. Boom. Next question. All right. However, <laughs> however, we can still get the benefit of polymorphism. That just kills this benefit. All right. We can't do multiple inheritance because it would make sharing code really a pain. So we just have one level of inheritance. However, we might be able to allow a class to fill several different roles if we go about it a different way. All right? We might be able to allow a class to fulfill several different roles if we go about it a different way. 
And that different way is called an interface. All right? Now, don't be confused about interface like a graphical interface. It, it, it's the same word, but it doesn't mean the same thing at all. An interface is, in essence, I think in the textbook they call it a contract. All right? Um, it's, a, it's a promise that your subclass will contain certain abstract functions that are defined on the interface level. All right? And a class, although a class can only have one superclass in terms of inheritance, a class can have multiple uh, interfaces that it implements. Now, in Java terminology, a subclass extends a superclass. So we say public class specialist extends consultant. With interfaces, we don't say extends because it's a different thing. We say it implements an interface. All right, so if I say it implements an interface, what effectively I'm doing is I'm promising that it's going to have certain methods. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see where we left off last time. what our example was. All right. Last time we did an example of students. I didn't think, we, I, I thought we had moved beyond the, the consultant uh, example last time. And sure enough, we did. We did an example of students. And what we had was something like this. We had a student which we declared as an abstract class. And as an abstract class, that means that we can't instantiate it, but we can still cast a, an object to play that role. All right. We had an in-county resident that was inherited from that. We had an out-of-county. And we had an out-of-state. So that was our, our diagram last time. We had two levels of inheritance going down on the out of county, out of state, and we also had a subclass of in county. And our is a rule holds true there, right? Because an in county student is a student. A is a more specialized kind of student. We know a little bit more about an in county student than we know about other ones. Namely, they live in this county and they get charged certain tuition rates. An out-of-county student is also a student. And lastly, an out-of-state student is also an out-of-county student and they're also a student. So our is a relationships hold still. All right? But there's other things that students are besides in-county and out-of-county and students. All right? For example, um, If you've supplied an email address to LC, or in fact, I think all of you have an LC email address, all right, you are also a person that gets notified of alerts. So if, for example, you know, not this winter, but some, a normal winter, if we had, you know, really bad snow on a given day, you might get an alert um, that said that, hey, class is canceled tonight because there's too much snow, all right? So it would be another is a relationship that we could make is we could say a student is a alert receiving person or a person that receives alerts, an alerted person. I don't know. I can't think of a concise way to say it, but you get the idea. Now, who else is a alerted person? Employees, faculty, all right. And I can make is a relationships for all of those. So, I could say that a in-county student is an alerted person. An out-of-county student is an alerted person. And a out-of-state student is an alerted person. In fact, I could say just flat out, a student is an alerted person. All right? And yet, we know from multiple inheritance that we can't inherit 
say, out-of-county student from alerted person. All right? But we might want a student object to play the role of an alerted person and send an alert to them. All right? Um, so how do we accomplish that? We accomplish that via an interface. Now, what I could do is I could do something like this. I could have my employee, and I could have my faculty, all right? And going across this inheritance structure, this class diagram, all three of these fit that category of an alerted person. So what I can do is I can create an interface for alerted person and each of those classes can implement that. Now, you have a desi design decision to make because any entity could be said to be several different things. All right? A student is a, you know, a, 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 a graduate student is a student. An undergraduate student is a student. A county resident is a student, and so on. All these people are also people that we might want to send alerts to. All right? They may be people that are on our mailing list. All right? Just as um, all these people, all these entities that I showed on this diagram are people that we send alerts to, they're also people that are on our mailing list. And the is a test still holds, right? A student is a mailing list member. A faculty person is a mailing list member. A employee is a mailing list member. So, but we can only in establish one inheritance structure, all right? Yet something can play the role of a bunch of different things. So how do you decide which to inherit from and which to make an interface? You decide based on two different ways of looking at it. And, and really, the two different ways of looking at it, both most of the time, will probably lead you to the same conclusion in a particular case. First thing to do is you can put your real world hat on, all right, and say, OK, what is an out of county student really? How would I think of an out of county student? Would I think of them first and foremost as a someone that I'm sending an alert to, someone that's on the mailing list, or would I think of them first and foremost as a student? Well, an out-of-county student first and foremost is a student. Yeah, they do those other things, but first and foremost, at least within the context of this problem, they're a student, and so on down the line. So one way to determine which to make the inheritance relationship and which to make the interface relationship is you look for the strongest is a relationship, right? Uh, let's say we have a, a car. We might have a class for vehicle. Let's say we have three classes up here. We have a vehicle class a car class, and, to, and a painted thing class. Which one makes the best super class for automobile? Well, a vehicle does, right? Because I think of a car, first and foremost, I'm thinking of a vehicle. Yeah, I could say that it's a painted thing. It is a thing that's painted. Yeah, it's a painted thing. But just in, in general, everyday reasoning, you're going to think of a car first and foremost as a vehicle. And oh yeah, by the way, also it's a painted thing. It also is a thing that has a battery. Also is a thing that's powered by gasoline. And so on down the line. All right? So therefore, in this instance, I would create that as the superclass and create an interface for painted things. I can then make 
that painted thing interface also apply to houses. Um, house exteriors, house interiors, um, I guess anything that could be painted, right? Now, what does it mean to define an interface now? To define an interface, we're going to define a set of functions that we're going to guarantee that anything that implements that interface contains. The reason we're doing that is then we can plug that in any place that the interface is called for, and we know that that class will have those methods. So, for example, let's create this little vehicle and let's create this. Uh, Let's create the, the vehicle um, and painted thing class. Okay. So let me go in here. I'm going to make a vehicle class. I'm going to make a painted. Now, I don't make it a class, I make it an interface. All right? Now, I can, in a way, that's like sort of like an abstract class insofar as I can't um, instantiate it. I have to instantiate um, a concrete class. Now, what are some things that I might define, you know, maybe I'm going to define the type of paint that um, the painted thing requires. So, and we'll just return in a string. And I'm going to define it like an abstract function. All right? Public string get paint. And I'm not supplying any of the details, right? Each class that implements this method might have its own method for calculating or determining or identifying what kind of paint it is. Right? A car requires a certain kind of paint. A house requires a certain kind of paint. Um, an, e uh, an exterior requires a certain kind of paint. Aluminum siding requires a certain kind of paint. All these things require a certain kind of paint. In the interface, we don't care what the class has to do to come up with this answer. We just want the class to have this answer available. All right? So, all right, we define the interface and we define a set of functions
Maybe I have an average paint time method that depending on what I'm painting um, it is, you know, how long is it going to take on the average to paint that? How long does it take to paint a car? I don't know. Eight hours? We'll, we'll pretend it's eight hours. How long does it take to paint a house? Depends how big the house is, right? We could make some assumptions based on the surface area of the house, you know, how much someone could paint a day, and then come up with some sort of calculation, all right, based on that. When we declare an interface, we're not concerned about how each individual class is going to implement the code to do this. We just want to know, we just want to guarantee that any class that implements this interface has these methods. All right, they're like abstract methods. We just declare the method on this level. When we implement it, we have to then go and specify the details. All right, so let's go in. I've saved this. I'm going to minimize it because I'll probably have to refer to it. And I'm going to open up that. I'm going to say that this implements painted. All right. That's telling me that it's a subclass of vehicle, but it implements the interface painted. What does that mean? It means at the bare minimum, this needs these two classes to be defined. So I'm just going to go in and put something goofy in here to say what kind of paint does it need? It needs car paint. How long does it take to, to paint? Man, well, it takes eight hours, let's say. All right. Okay. So we, we've declared that. And we've promised that it has this. Now, in automobile, there could be all the other automobile methods, right? get miles per gallon, get how, how the tank size, get how much it takes to fill it up. We're going to omit those just in the interest of not having to watch me type and uh, of really focusing on the things that we are implementing. So we can have all the other all the other methods we need specific to car. And we can override some methods on the vehicle class if we want to, and so on. But by virtue of the fact that we've said that this implements the painted interface, we have to have these two uh, methods on it. All right? So let's go and let's write a little test routine for this. Let me make sure everything is saved. Painted P equals new, did I say car or automobile? Automobile. So I'm going to create an automobile, but I'm going to treat it like a painted thing. I'm going to cast it. In this sense, this is very similar to what we've done with superclasses and subclasses, right? We can create a painted thing and set it equal to a new automobile because an automobile is in fact a painted thing. We've said that because we've said it implements that class. So now I can then go and say system dot out dot print ln. We can say that the type of paint is And we can say how long it will take to do it. All right. 
Now let's go and compile this and make sure we have no errors. And then we'll move on to the next one. Not on Unix, right? No, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> All right, compiled. Type of paint that it requires, it requires car paint. How long will it take? Eight hours. Okay. Now, watch what happens if I do this. If I do not implement one of these methods. All right. I get an error. All right. Why do I get an error? I get an error because I didn't impl I said it was implementing that interface and yet I didn't define one of the methods that are defined on that interface. All right. This is the same sort of error, in fact the verbiage is almost identical to if I created an abstract function on a class, on a superclass, and didn't implement it on the subclass. All right. If you notice again, very, you know, automobile is not abstract and does not overwrite, override abstract method get paint time. In essence, every method that we define on an interface is an abstract method, right? Because this, anything that implements that interface has to go and implement that. All right? So, let's, uh, let's go, let's put that back so that we can compile this. Any questions at this point? Yes. Absolutely. Ah, excellent question. And let, let's think that through. The question was, can a class implement more than one interface? And the answer is yes. The question then becomes, won't we have the same problem that we had with, potential problem that we had with multiple inheritance? The whole reason we don't have multiple inheritance. And the answer is no. And the reason we don't have that problem is because of this. If we had multiple inheritance, there could be code in here that's different than code in here. All right? Which means what code do we execute? All right? With multiple interfaces, if we had, for example, our automobile class, which inherits from vehicle, and we implemented the painted interface and we implemented a has battery in a interface. Let's say both of these had a, you know, get, get item name method. Remember, the difference is, is with multiple inheritance, there can be code uh, there and code there. And that's where the problem lies. Here, these are abstract functions. So there's no code associated with it. So there will only be one method called get item name. And that one method will satisfy both of these interfaces. All right. In other words, both of those interfaces would require a get item name function. Okay. So we put a get item name function in our automobile class. All right. And that satisfies the requirements of both interface. And there's no ambiguity about what code we're going to get. Because if we call get item name, we're going to get the code that's in the automobile class. There is no code there in there that's going to cause a potential conflict. Not like there would be if we allowed multiple inheritance. 
because if we allow multiple inheritance, a given function could have code on this one and code on this one, in which case, what code is this going to get? Um, in essence, because the functions you declare on an interface are abstract functions, you don't run into the conflict of there could be code defined on one and code defined on the other, which one do you use? There's no code defined on either, therefore the code that you're going to use is going to be that one. So in a nutshell, that's what keeps you from having that problem. All right. So we lose the benefit of reusability of code that you get from inheritance, but you still get the benefit of polymorphism, that we can go and we can plug these in anywhere the interface is required. All right. Did that help? Well, well, remember that that when you declare an interface, you don't declare any behaviors. You're only de declaring the name of the method. You're only saying that anything that implements this is going to have some function. So therefore, you're not thinking of if I'm, a, if I'm a thing with a battery, what, what is get item name going to return? Or if I'm a thing with uh, a, a, a painted, if I'm a painted thing, what does get item name going to return? The question is, is if I'm an automobile, what will get item name return? Maybe it will return for an automobile the VIN number, for example. And maybe for a house it would return the address, let's say for painted things. And maybe for something else it would return a student number. All right, something that can have insurance. Maybe you'd return a person's social security number or something like that. All right, so it's not like what behavior will I get for get item name for a battery or a painted because there is no behavior implied in that. We know there will be that method, but there's no functionality included in there. There's no code included in there. We're just saying anything that implements that, I need to be able to ask this question to. The real question is, is what does get item name mean for an automobile? All right, and that's where the code is going to live. All right, let's make a second class that is also a, um, a painted item uh, that isn't a vehicle. Let's make a house. All right. So let's save a house in public class house. Doesn't extend vehicle, but it does implement painted. And we could have in here all the methods specific to house. All right. Let's make a constructor here. Let's make a let's make a size string. And let's make a constructor for house that accepts a string so that when we create the house we can declare whether the house is small, medium, or large. Right? Because it takes different time to paint a small house than it takes to paint a medium house it takes a, than it takes to paint a large house. Now, by virtue of the fact that we've said that this defined, or I'm sorry, implements the painted interface, we have to have these functions in here. So forget paint, I'm just going to put house paint, all right? Just to sh have some difference there. Now, for calculating the average paint time, that depends on the, the, the size of the house, right? What would be a reasonable, how long would it take to paint a small house? I don't know. It's been ages since I painted a house. Uh, my current house has siding and I'll never paint it. All right. Let's say it takes 24 hours to paint a small house and 32 to paint a medium and 40 to paint a large. I have no idea if that's right or not. So, but uh, we'll, we'll code that. Double um, hours, let's say. And I'll say if 
size equals s then hours equals 24. And again, I should have the sets and gets for this, but I, I will skip those. And then I'll return the number of hours. I'll just initialize it at zero. All right. Now notice that the method for calculating how long it's going to paint this house depends on the size of the house, right? There is no size of the house attribute to a car, right? That doesn't make any sense. And we just said that it takes eight hours to paint a car, regardless of how big it is, because all cars are approximately the same size. I wouldn't think it would take substantially longer to paint one car than another, whereas with a house, it would seem that there would be a big difference. Here's a key point. Each class has its own implementation of these methods, all right? And those implementations can be wildly different. The one example I gave uh, in a previous class that I talked about, let's say we had an interface for flying things. All right. Um, there could be on that interface to find a method, get maximum speed for a flying thing. Well, how do you calculate the different maximum speeds? Well, for an airplane, I would imagine that the, that the size of the engine and the type of engines and all that, and maybe even the kind of fuel, would all factor in. And you could do some sort of calculation to take all those factors into account and say, yeah, this plane can fly this fast, whereas this plane can only fly this fast. For a bird, I don't know, maybe it's a function of what kind of bird it is. Maybe it's a function of its wingspan. Maybe it's a function of how old it is. Who knows? There might be totally different factors that come into play for how fast a bird flies. <laughs> versus how fast an airplane flies. You know, a bird typically doesn't have an engine. So there would be nothing about an engine in the bird's method for calculating the maximum speed. An airplane typically doesn't have feathers, right? doesn't have a gender. Therefore, none of those things could come into play in calculating the plane's speed. The point is, is that the implementation of the, these methods can be wildly different. The only thing the interface says is, I'm going to guarantee that it will have these methods. So then I can plug that in anywhere that I need one of these. And I know for sure that if I call this method, it will be there. That if I call a average paint time method uh, on anything that implements my painted interface, then that method will be there. And the, 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 the class will do what it needs to do. It might just say eight hours to paint a car. It might say, well, depending on the size of the house, it's 32 or 24 or 40. But I know some way it's going to do its thing and it's going to return a result that matches up what, what the interface is expecting. In other words, it's going to return a double in this case. All right, so let's go in and... edit this. Let's say that we have a small house. I think that's right. All right. So, as you can see, it calls the appropriate function on the car class and on the house class, on the automobile class and the, and the house class. 
All right. We can do that. And again, then we can do, you know, we could create a method that, ex that, that expects a uh, painted uh, class. And we could give it a car, we could give it a house, we could give it, um, you know, um, someone's fingernails. All right. We could give it anything that can be painted and it can do this calculation. And when we declared an interface, all that that means is that is going to support those methods. We can then plug that in and treat that polymorphically. So, with the interfaces, again, because all of these methods are abstract, we don't get the ability and we don't get the benefit of reusable code like we do with inheritance. All right? All these are abstract. There's no attributes on the painted. The interface doesn't require any particular attributes. Essentially, the interface says, if you're going to implement me, if you're going to implement this interface, these are the questions you need to be able to answer. These are the methods that you need to have. However you can calculate it, that's fine with me. I don't care, you know. But you have to be able to give me an answer if I ask you what kind of paint you, you use, and you have to be able to give me an answer that says how long is it going to take to paint you. All right? Questions about this. And as was said before, we could have then multiple um, other interfaces, you know, for, for uh, battery powered that would ask for the size of the battery, for example, or, or whatever. All right, and we could apply that to cars, but not then to houses, because houses don't typically have batteries associated with them. Yes? Okay, great question. The question was, is what happens if there is a subclass, all right, uh, into, uh, um, into play here? In other words, what if we make an electric car, all right, inherits from car, let's say, all right? The answer to that is it's, it's the same as it is with abstract functions. And that is, somewhere down the chain, it needs to implement that. All right? So what I could do is, let's open up my automobile class and go, we'll save that as electric automobile. I don't have to declare those methods on the electric automobile because I already know those methods were defined on the automobile level. So I can do this and it will, um, it will um, compile. I also don't have to say that, impl that it implements that particular interface because, um, because I've said that the superclass implements it. So I could go and do this Oops. didn't look where I was typing And this will be fine, right? I don't have to declare that method on this level because it's defined on the superclass level. As long as something, as long as whatever implements it, um, implements those methods, I'm fine. I also don't have to say that the electric automobile implements that because the ancestor does. And by implication, that gets inherited. So I can go in and do this. And... Everything works, and it will take an electric car that many hours. Now, 
if for whatever reason, let's say it takes 12 hours to paint an electric car because there's more stuff you have to do. You have to take off the thingy dues before you paint it. All right. I could override that method in the electric car um, class. So maybe for electric cars, I could go and override that. And return 12, let's say. And then it would take that one 12 hours. That's a good question. Can you inherit interfaces? Oh, darn, we're out of time. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, there, there's two ways we could find out. We could ask Google or we could try it ourselves. Let's try it ourselves. Let's think of a, you know, a um, special kind of paint, special kind of painted thing. What would be a special kind of painted thing? Yeah, multi multi multicolor painted, all right? We'll call it multi painted. Right. And multi painted extends painted, and let's say get number of colors. All right, so we'll save that. Then let's go and fingernails multi painted return nail polish average paint time I would say an hour and what else did we say? Get number of colors. And I'm just going to hard code a value. in here and let's say let's return three all right so let's go and add to that test class the code Four equals new fingernails. P4. 
four, P four. My guess is this will work, but I don't remember off the top of my head if this is allowable or not. What was that? Yes, I did. Same thing with of. Okay. All right, let's see. Compiles clean and it goes like that. So the answer is yes. We can go in and we can do that. We can create an interface that extends another interface and adds methods to that. Then if we have a class that, that implements that interface, it needs to implement everything in the super interface and then everything in the sub interface. So for example, if for fingernails if we got rid of that, we should be looking at a compile error. Sure enough. So you see, when you start factoring all these things in, subclasses, superclasses, interfaces, inheriting interfaces, the fact that you can have multiple interfaces on a class, and so on, you see that, that um, even though the structures are simple, you know, we talked about really four ways that classes slash interfaces can be related to each other. Um, you have an endless variety of ways that you can configure a particular situation, especially when you consider multiple uh, implementation of interfaces and so on. Other questions? Now, this is why design becomes so important. Um, as you can see, you know, you can use design to develop a really great, easy to maintain, usable system, or you can, if you don't, don't get, pay enough attention to it, create a real mess. It's going to be harder still to, to, to debug uh, and so on. So that's why the design of it, again, is, is oftentimes more important than the, I won't say more important, but um, is often harder than the actual coding. You know, if you design those classes, the methods, and again, and I realize in this example, the methods I gave are just sort of, you know, just to have something there. But the methods that you de define oftentimes are not that involved. You know, there's, there's, you know, once you get used to writing those little algorithms to do things, it really isn't that big a deal once you figure out. But the, the tough part, the devil, is in the details of how you're going to design it and what subclasses, superclasses, interfaces, where you're going to put what and all that. That really, I think, uh, oftentimes takes the most effort and is the most complex. Doing that then, and if you do that then, you can then hand that off and let someone else fill in the details and, and write the, the individual functions and so on, provided you have a good solid design. Um, other questions? All right, we'll see you up in lab.